That's awesome, guys. Thank you. Good morning, Unity of San Antonio. It's wonderful to see all your faces and all your good energy this morning. So let's open up with some music. I am opening up to the good. I am opening up to the good. I am opening up to the good, to the good that is my life. Joy. I am opening up to the joy. I am opening up to the joy. I am opening up to the joy to the joy that is my life peace i am opening up to the peace i am opening up to the peace i am opening up to the peace to the peace that is my life love i am opening up to the love i am opening up to the love, I am opening up to the love, to the love that is my life. I am opening, 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 I am opening to the good that is my life. I am opening, I am opening. I am opening, I am opening, I am opening, I am opening to the good that is my life. I am opening up to the fun, I am opening up to the fun, I am opening up to the fun, to the fun that is my life. Song, I am opening up. To the song, I am opening up to the song. I am opening up to the song, to the song that is my life. Dance, I am opening up to the dance. I am opening up to the dance. I am opening up to the dance, to the dance that is my life. I am opening, 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 I am opening to the good that is my life. I am opening, 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 I am opening. To the good that is my life. To the good that is my life. To the good that is my life. So 
guys are awake. That's awesome. <laughs> so Brene Brown is quoted as having said, courage starts with showing up and letting ourselves be seen. You know, it's scary to reveal ourselves. Maybe we're afraid that our thoughts or ideas or who we are will be judged or that will be rejected. But we cannot predicate what we do on what other people do or don't do. What matters is that we choose to show up, regardless of what other people are doing or not doing. We can't predicate forgiveness on whether or not somebody does or doesn't forgive. We just need to choose to forgive. We can't predicate accepting responsibility for our actions based on whether or not somebody else does or does not accept responsibility for theirs. We just need to accept responsibility for what we did or didn't do and take appropriate action, whether that's making amends or keeping a promise. We can't predicate loving someone based on what they do or don't do or whether or not they love us. We just need to choose to open our hearts. And so on Palm Sunday, in absolute freedom, Without predicating his choices upon what others would or would not do, Jesus rode into Jerusalem, courageous, his heart open, revealing himself as the fullness of the light that he was. Shall we open our time together in prayer? I invite you to settle into your seat, to take a breath, and allow your body to relax. And another breath, relaxing even more as you allow your eyes to gently close. And if you would, allow my words to be your words. There is only one infinite something. One infinite. Which means there is nothing else. Nothing else. And I am one with this one infinite something, inseparable and indistinguishable from it. And as such, I express the vibrant life, the ineffable love, the ever-available wisdom, the inexhaustible plenty, and the revitalizing power that it is. And therefore, I am in this very moment. This is principle. This is unshakable. This is foundational truth. And so with this breath and this and this, I affirm yet again that God is right here where I am, right now, nearer to me than my own breath. And knowing this to be true, I allow courage to lead me out of hiding. Knowing this to be true, I no longer predicate my actions on what others do or don't do. Knowing this to be true, I allow myself to be seen as the fullest expression of God as me. This is my bedrock for the upcoming week. This is the truth that I will tell myself when I wake up in the morning. This is the truth I will curl up with at night. This is the truth that I will whisper to myself when I am afraid. This is the truth that I will ride into Jerusalem with. And we let this be so, and so it is. Yeah. 
Come on up. Come on up. Come on, Odu. Hey, Ellie. Awesome. All right, Otto, you want to help me today? All right, for those who are new and haven't been here with us, and YFM team that's working today, if you can come up too. Um, it looks like you're all here. Yay, thank you. Um, if you haven't been here before, how, what we do is you as a congregation will start us off with the first thing, God is life, and then we're going to say something after you, and we'll go back and forth until it's done, okay? All right. I'll light when you start. Okay. You guys go ahead and go. I am life. I am light. I am joy. I am love. I am beauty. I am peace. I am power. All these things I is. I am. All these things. All these things, God is, I am. Yes. Well done. All right, next you guys have a youth blessing for our youth. Children and teens, we know who you are. You are the light of God. We love you, we bless you, we celebrate you. And we see you doing great things. And then kids, we have a blessing for our family and friends. So get your hands together, warm up that energy, and send it their way. And if you're not, don't remember the words, they're right here. Nice and loud. Families, we love you, we bless you, we believe in you, and we thank you. Namaste. Nice job. All right, all the kids go to our classrooms, head out this side door. Good morning. <laughs> So my name is Zinnia Crowley. I am a YOUer actually, and I'm just filling in for my dad, Zeke Crowley, who was supposed to be here today, but he's feeling under the weather. But I will be your celebration host for today. <laughs> Welcome to Unity of San Antonio, a loving, inclusive spiritual community. We honor the universal truths in all religions and respect each person's chosen spiritual path. We offer practical tools to help people of all faiths and from all walks of life apply universal spiritual principles in their daily lives. We believe that each of us are a unique expression of the divine, and we support you in unfolding your spiritual potential to its fullest. Whoever you are and wherever you are on your spiritual path, we welcome you with open arms and hearts. So unity is founded in affirmative prayer. If you would like a trained prayer chaplain to see a higher possibility for you, please feel free to fill out one of the prayer intention slips that you can find in the seat in front of you and place it in the offering basket later in the service. 
And if you are online, please go to the prayer link on our website and fill out the online prayer request form. All prayers are kept in the highest confidence. If you'd like a prayer chaplain to call you, please leave your phone number on either the paper or online form. Our prayer chaplains are in service with you this morning, holding loving space. Prayer chaplains, if you would, please stand up so everyone can see you and know who you are. They are available to pray with you in person after service today. Every Sunday, we like to reacquaint ourselves with why we do what we do by affirming our vision and mission together. So if we want to start. As divine love, we envision a spiritually transformed, peaceful world. We dance in the truth of who we are through meditation, study, and service. Okay, Unity of San Antonio's annual membership meeting will take place today after service. Pizza will be served immediately after service and the vegetable up front for those attending. Everyone is welcome to attend, however, only members are able to vote. Do you like pancakes? <laughs> if so, then you are invited next Sunday to our Easter morning pancake breakfast. Starting at 930 our board staff will be serving up delicious, regular, and gluten-free pancakes, <laughs> along with sausage, bacon, fruit, and juice. And then starting on Thursday, April 4th, Flavio, Flavio will, he will be facilitating a class called How to Find Your Life Purpose and Have a Happy Life. Flavio describes this class. The majority of people wander through life without knowing what their purpose is. In this workshop, we will learn different proven techniques to help discover our life purpose. This nine-week class will be held on Thursdays from 7 to 9 p.m. And then starting tomorrow, Reverend Nina will be co-facilitating with Dr. Richard Lauren Held a series of Zoom discussions during Holy Week entitled, Don't Be Afraid. These discussion groups will take us on a journey from old life to new life, with each session lasting about 30 minutes. Please see our events page for more information and to register. When you register, the Zoom link will be automatically emailed to you. And tickets are now on sale for our spring concert, featuring Matthew Wilson and Richard Held on April 14th. We have missed you, Unit of San Antonio. I'm Richard Lauren Held. This is Matthew Wilson. We're the leadership team at Unity in Linwood, Washington. We are honored, honored to return to your campus under the leadership of our beloved Reverend Nina Clark to offer a Sunday morning at a concert. We hope, hope, hope you will grace us with the gift of your noble presence on Sunday, April 14th. When the dark would fell before me And all the paths were overgrown When the priest of pride say there is no other way I tilled the sorrows of stone did not believe because I could not see, though you came to me in the night. When the dawn seemed forever lost, you showed me your love in the light of the stars. Cast your eyes on the ocean, cast your soul to the sea. dark night seems endless, please remember me. See you soon. So to purchase tickets, which are just $20, you go to the events page of our website and you'll be able to purchase with cash or check only at the door. If you missed the concert last year, you won't want to miss it this year. And Unity of San Antonio also has several ongoing events, which you can see on the screen behind me, including A Course in Miracles, Sunday Morning Explorers, and much more. 
Please see the events page on our website for more information and to register for all activities and classes. Now, if you would, go ahead and stand as you are able and say hello to each other, both those you know and those you don't know yet. to stand on this mic for once. Today we get a special musical guest. Carrington Donald, who goes by 34K, is a rising star from the heart of Louisiana music that brings youth and soulfulness to San Antonio. <clears throat> Her musical journey began with the plastic guitar of Guitar Hero, because yes, yes, <laughs> which became more than just a game. It became a vital part of who she is. Inspired by her passion, Carrington's basketball coach bestowed upon her the title of 34K, combining her basketball number and her first initial, marking the start of her musical career. Driven by an unwavering love for music, 34K has blossomed into an artist who captivates audiences across San Antonio. And this is true, I have seen her several times and she's amazing. <laughs> Uh, her cover of I Like That gained recognition on Janelle Monet's channel, broadening her impact. Uh, drawing inspiration from artists like Joe Scott, Lillian Le Havas, and John Mayer, 34K artfully blends styles, carving out a distinct musical identity. So let's give her a very nice and very warm welcome. Hi. 
Thank you. Uh, I want to first um, thank uh, Reverend Nina for asking me to come and play for you all this morning. Um, so I won't talk very much. I'll get to playing. I just want to let you guys know uh, I'm going to play a couple of songs that I just love to play, and I hope you guys enjoy them. So here we go. You're just too good to be true. Can't take my eyes off of you. You be like heaven to touch. I wanna hold you so much. As long as love has arrived, and I thank God I'm alive. You're just too good to be true. I'm taking so you. Parked in the way that I stare, there's nothing else to compare. The sight of you leaves me weak. There are no words left to speak. And if you feel I feel, please let me know that it's real. You're just too good to be true. Can take my hands of you. I need you, baby. If it's quite sunrise, I need you, baby. To warm the lonely nights, so pretty, baby. Trust in me when I say it's okay. Oh, pretty, baby. Don't let me down, I pray. Oh, pretty baby, now that I found you, stay and let me love you, baby. Let me love, let me love you. Okay. I need you, baby. Oh, I need you, baby. Let me love you. Play one more for you guys, and if you know the song, please participate. Right. It might seem crazy what I'm about to say. Sunshine, she's still won't you take a break? My hot air balloon that can go to space With the head like I don't care Baby, by the way Because I can drive along If you feel like a room without a roof Because I can drive along If you feel like happiness is the truth Because I can drive along If you know what happiness is to you Cause I have a long if you feel like that's what you're going to do. You come in and start getting this Give me all that you got, but don't hold it back. I should probably want you, I'll be just fine. No offense to you, don't waste your time. Here's why, because I am a Babylon if you feel like a room without a roof. Because I am a Babylon if you feel like happiness is the truth. Because I am a Babylon if you know what happiness is to you. Because I am a Babylon if you feel like that's what you're going to do. Bring me down. Can I bring me down, saying the levels too high to bring me down? 
Can't of them bring me down. Bring me down. Can't of them bring me down. Send the levels to I bring me down. Can't let them bring me down because I have a long one. If you feel like a room without a room, because I have a long one. If you feel like happiness is the truth, because I. so much <laughs> thank you all thank you for having me again I really appreciate it I enjoyed playing for you all y'all have a good one okay first song, You're Just Too Good to Be True, and Pardon the Way That I Stare, that just made me think about how Jesus' followers must have felt as they were walking into Jerusalem with him that day. You know, you're just too good to be true. You know, I mean, imagine everybody's pinching themselves and, and pardon the way that I stare, you know, because of what you're saying and what you're doing. I thought, what a perfect song. So <laughs> thank you. So good morning. My name is Reverend Nina Clark, and for those of you who don't know, I'm the senior minister here at Unity of San Antonio. And like I'd like to say every Sunday, I just want you to know how deeply honored I am to share this spiritual walk with all of you as we, as, as Myrtle Filmer likes to say, as we wake up together spiritually. And so whether you're here for the first time or the 999th time, I just want you to know you're welcome here. And whatever your reason for being here today, we welcome you with love in our hearts and in recognition of you as beautiful and, and divine and sacred. And we are so glad that you're here with us on this beautiful Palm Sunday morning. And we also like to welcome those of you who are joining us online. And so if we would, those of us here, just turn around and give a wave. I hear that they really like it when we acknowledge their presence and say, hey, we know you're here with us and, and we love that. So. <clears throat> Before we begin today, would you join me in a moment, for, for, for a moment, in a prayer for peace? I invite us as a community to stand for peace during this time of great upheaval and violence in our world. And if you would close your eyes and, and cultivate a sense of peace within over the past weeks, we learned about how powerful it is when we create a feeling and then radiate it out in the world that it actually is a real thing. It's, we radiate waves of whatever it is that we are feeling out into the world. So let us today choose to intentionally cultivate peace within us, peace within us, and radiate that out into the world, knowing, knowing that it does make a difference. Our vibrations of peace will find and link to other vibrations of peace and create a web of peace. Let there be peace on earth, earth and let it begin with us. And so it is. Thank you. So, Palm Sunday. <clears throat> this day marks the beginning of Holy Week, that day that Yeshua ben Joseph entered Jerusalem knowing, knowing that he had come to surrender his life. I think it's really important as we enter Holy Week 
which is also referred to as the passion of Jesus, that we first lay some what I think is really important groundwork. First and foremost, Yeshua ben Joseph, the man that we refer to as Jesus, was not Christian. Christianity didn't exist while he was alive. Christianity first emerged as a sect of Judaism practiced in the Roman province of Judea based first on the teachings of Jesus and later on the writings of Paul. Yeshua's scripture was the Hebrew Bible, what we often refer to as the Old Testament. There was yet no New Testament. The first gospel wasn't written until some 40 years after his passing. Yeshua ben Joseph was a Jew, and every author in the Bible was Jewish by birth, with the exception of one who was a, converse, a convert to Judaism. Yeshua was Jewish, and in spite of what television and the movies want to show us, in spite of the plethora of paintings and artwork depicting Jesus as blonde-haired and blue-eyed, Yeshua ben Joseph was actually brown-skinned and brown-eyed and with dark hair, like his Jewish family, friends, and neighbors. Bishop John Shelby Spong wrote the following, the Jewishness of Jesus, the Jewishness of Mary, his mother, the Jewishness of the apostles, the Jewishness of Paul, and even the Jewishness of the heroes of the Hebrew past was at worst systematically denied and at best subtly understated. And we will never understand any of the Gospels unless and until one can embrace their essential Jewishness. Jesus was Jewish, and so we would do well to read and contemplate his teachings through the context of his Jewishness and through the context of the time in which he lived. The story of, of the Holy Week, or the Passion of Jesus, starts with Jesus entering the city of Jerusalem. And the scripture from Matthew 21, 1 through 11, is as follows. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. I'm just going to step out of the story for a moment, because the woman that, who I follow, is a, she's a, her name is A.J. Levine, and she is a Jewish New Testament um, uh, scholar. And one of the things that she says about this passage is that, you know, we've kind of mystified it. He says, but you think about it today, if, if you're with somebody, and he says, look, go into the next town, and there's a Corvette and right next to it's parked, a VW Bug. Um, go ahead and grab those for me, would you? And, and if anybody says anything, just say, your Lord sent you. <laughs> what, what do you think would happen? <laughs> and she says, the likelihood is he knew them. And so he was saying, they already know. I've already talked to them. They, they know that they're going to loan me this, this um, you know, the, the donkey and the colt. So just let them know that I sent you and, and all will be good. But I, I thought that was kind of funny because she's really looking at it through the context of the time. No, he didn't just mysteriously steal somebody's donkey. So anyway, back into the story. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. So the disciples did and went as Jesus had directed them to do. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. And this passage actually also affirms that one of the things that our gospel writers did was to, they, they back wrote. They wrote and then they went to a previous gospel to tell you that the reason that Jesus did X, Y, Z was to fulfill this earlier prophecy. So they were kind of like taking, hey, doesn't this work well? It's like he's, and I'll write it in such a way so that it actually looks like it really is fulfilling this prophecy. So, and more and more scholars are really, really supporting this um, particular way of looking at the, at the writings of the gospels. Back to the story. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. 
Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, who is this? And the crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. So let's fill in the scene here a little bit. <clears throat> Jerusalem, the capital of Judea, is heaving with people. According to, kind of like spring break at Big Bend, I'll tell you. <laughs> According to Josephus, a first century Roman Jewish historian and a contemporary of the gospel's authors, on Passover, the population of Jerusalem swelled to more than two million as Jews made pilgr pilgrimages to the temple for the annual celebration of Israel's liberation from slavery in Egypt. Ancient pilgrims had to be in the city no later than seven days before the beginning of the feast. So there are lots and lots of Jewish people, and there are lots of Roman soldiers because Judea was under Roman jurisdiction. So three times a year during the, during the Jewish pilgrimage holidays, the governor or prefect would ride and mar march with his military might to Jerusalem to manage the celebrating throng. For as the historian Josephus also wrote, it was during these holidays that people could be most easily provoked or stirred up to rebel against Roman oppression. So during the time of our story, Pontius Pilate was the Roman governor of Judea. And so it was he who rode into the city from the beautiful, wealthy harbor city of Caesarea, surrounded by his troops in order to keep order and to squelch any protests that might erupt. And so it was into this melee that Yeshua rode into Jerusalem on his donkey with a message of freedom, of autonomy, and of change. I like to say that Jesus would have been very comfortable in the 60s. He was highly visible accompanied by a large and noisy crowd composed of those whose lives he had touched with his truth teachings and healings. This crowd shouted, Hosanna, while laying branches on the ground to pave the way. The confrontation was inevitable. So as students of unity teachings, what are we to do with this story? So a little more history here, and this time it's our own. New Thought teachings are commonly agreed upon to trace their roots back to one Phineas Quimby, who in the late 1800s became very curious because of a healing that he had gone through himself as to how Jesus accomplished the healings that he was purported to have done. In his research, he discovered that what Yeshua was teaching was that we are one with an infinite God and that what we believe outpictures into our reality. Sound familiar? This is the truth that will set us free. And Jesus knew this so deeply in the marrow of his bones that he radiated it out into the world around him. And all receptive souls were transformed by this. Yeshua lived the truth that he taught. He lived his spirituality. So perhaps, as Unity students, if we walk alongside Yeshua as he rides into Jerusalem, we might learn something about how to live this truth into our lives. For Yeshua to ride into the city with the rowdy, noisy crowd announcing his arrival was to knowingly and intentionally challenge Roman authority. And to challenge Roman authority meant to potentially risk Roman capital punishment. And so for Jesus to enter the city in this way, he didn't slide in a side gate, but to enter the city in this way meant that he had committed to the path regardless of the outcome. His trust and his knowingness of his oneness with, the, with God and what he was there to do was absolute. Our unity and new thought teachings tell us that we can also create a life for ourselves that is full of capital G good, filled with more love, more light, greater health, astonishing abundance, all these things that Jesus taught as well. But we also teach that the path there 
isn't necessarily a hop and a skip through the tulips. We also teach that we have to give up that which no longer serves us in order to make space for our higher vibrational selves. Or said another way, we have to die to an old part of ourselves that would prevent us from taking the risk. And to do this, our faith has to be strong. We have to be committed. We have to dig deep. And we have to be willing to stay the course. And by riding into Jerusalem, intentionally provoking the powers that be, Jesus is showing us just that. We have to live our knowing of the truth of our oneness with God through the difficulties, through the challenges. And this is how Jesus enters Jerusalem, strong in his faith, trusting in the truth that he knows, and knowing, knowing that he is inseparable from his God. When I close my eyes and imagine myself entering the city as one of Yeshua's followers, for me, it marks the point of no return. I have set something in motion that cannot be stopped, and I must ride it out to the end. And to do that, I must be committed to what I know to be true and let that truth carry me through. And I know that you know what that feels like. It could be something small, but maybe feels monumental. Perhaps you've, I don't know, had a crush on someone for a long time, and you finally decide that you're going to ask them out, or just let them know. And you're standing on the stoop of their front door, flowers in hand, and you've rung the doorbell, and you hear footsteps on the other side. This is your point of no return. Sure, you could turn heel and run like mad, but at that point, they'd probably see your hind end booking it down the street, and there would be questions and answers that you would have to answer later. So you're standing on the stoop. You're in. You're committed. Or perhaps you've wanted to open your own cafe. You've done all your homework. You've created the business plan. The bank has agreed to give you a loan. You've signed all the papers, and now the keys are in your hand, and you're looking through the dirty glass at the cleanup and decorating and the remodeling that's in front of you. This is your point of no return. You've entered Jerusalem, and from this point forward, you're moving towards opening day. You know that you'll meet some challenges, but you're committed to working through whatever it is that is between you and pouring that first cup of coffee for your first customer or putting that first plate of food down in front of your first customer. For those of you who like sport analogies, the point of no return is when you've begun to swing the bat or swing your, I'm not even going to try, swing the golf club. <laughs> I'll do that until I'm wrong. Or when, you, or when you draw your ball, your arm back, and you're holding the bowling ball. In that heartbeat of a moment, you are fully committed, trusting in all that you've done to prepare for what it is that you're doing. Holy Week, if we allow it, can be a time of deep spiritual introspection. Jesus is about to give up his life, and he knows it. He says he knows he's going to anger some people, but what he's been called to say and to teach and to do and to share is more important to him. And I believe that Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. felt the same way. And I believe that Gandhi felt the same way. If we're going to let the story of Yeshua and his message grow us, it behooves us to ask ourselves the hard questions. What do we stand for? And are we willing to let our fears die so that we can express a greater truth of ourselves? Because you see, getting to the point of standing in front of that door with flowers in our hands or standing at the door of our cafe entails standing up for something that we believe in whether that is love that we deserve to give and receive, or creativity and abundance, or whatever that is for each of us. And it means that you're ready to metaphorically die to our old self, to those old beliefs that would prevent the birth of this fuller expression of who we are. Jewish New Testament scholar and professor Dr. A.J. Levine tells us that the story of the passion is one of risk-taking, our, our stories, our stories, are ones of risk. 
the risk that it takes emotionally, psychologically, and sometimes physically to step into our full spiritual potential and to do the work that it takes to get there, to follow the path of our heart, the path of the vision that wants to express through us, the path of the still small voice. And these things are worth the risk. So Palm Sunday asks, asks us, are we ready to die to fear? Die to the fear of being wrong, fear of being hurt, fear of looking foolish, fear of being different, fear of falling short, fear of loss or of not being loved or lovable, fear of not being good enough, are we ready to die to the fear that keeps us from feeling and or keeps us feeling and acting small, that keeps us from being authentic and vulnerable? The fear that makes us look away or causes us to be arrogant, the fear that makes us feel that we need to tell lies, or the fear that allows us to let ourselves down again and again. That fear that keeps us from keeping our own word. Are we willing? Are we willing to die to that fear? And are we ready to die to the fear that stops us from knowing the charge of Yeshua ben Joseph, to know the truth of ourselves and to live that truth, to be in integrity, to love one another and act like it, to be authentic, to hold ourselves to our highest standard? For when we do, when we choose to die to that fear, we will come to know ourselves truly as children of God, as emanations of the Most High, as divine expressions of the one life. We will come to know ourselves as love. I invite you to ask the hard questions, to hold up the mirror, to deepen your walk with the God of, it, of your understanding, and to get to know yourself a little better by walking the story of Yeshua's passion with him. And to this end, you are invited to join Dr. Held and I in a series of Holy Week Zoom discussions. And again, for more information, just see the events page of our website. You can attend one or all and just allow this journey of Holy Week to transform you. If we allow this story as it unfolds over the next week to stir us, to move us in the deepest parts of ourselves, to change us inside, then we will discover that we're moving from an old life marked by limited thinking and old patterns into new life, sparked by a breakthrough in consciousness that has spilled us out into a more expanded and maybe even perhaps a more humble version of ourselves. New Thought author and teacher and founder of what used to be called Religious Science and now called Centers for Spiritual Living, Ernest Holmes wrote, Jesus spoke of the joy which he had and which he desired us to have, that our joy might be full. There is music at the center of everything, and the melody is real. We must uncover the song and permit it to saturate our souls with joy. The ancient said, the wind whispers, the leaves clap their hands, and the morning stars sing together. Spiritual living is not a droll affair. It is the triumphant entry of the soul into the secret place of the Most High, where the scroll of life is inscribed with the joyous words, I am the Lord thy God in the midst of thee. Will you join me for a time of reflection? Hmm. I invite you to close your eyes and allow your body to become comfortable and place your attention on your breath. The silence is a place where we can retreat to find our center again, to, to catch our breath, to remember the truth of who and what we are. It's what Unity co-founder Myrtle Fillmore calls a, a kind of stillness, a place of retreat into which we might enter, and having entered, may know the truth. 
This stillness is a place to listen to God, and as this stillness settles into us, to find clarity and inspired action. I think it behooves us to ask ourselves the questions. Do we truly bring ourselves fully to the spiritual table? Do we fully invest in this work? How often do we truly bring our full attention into our meditation or into our spiritual practice? How often is there some little pocket of something else going on and we know it, yet we let it be there? Oh, we have excuses for it and reasons for it. Some thought we don't want to forget because it's important. A door that we leave cracked, perhaps just in case this doesn't work. Some little pocket of reservation that we hang on to so that mm, we won't be disappointed. But that little pocket of reservation, that back door, that withhold, it won't keep us safe. It keeps us trapped. That reservation, that withhold, it is what is between you and the glorious expression of the fullness of life as you. So no withholds, no back doors, no escape plans. Just be fully present. Take a breath, and as you inhale, gather yourself and bring yourself even more fully to this moment. And then I invite you to know with me that there is only one substance, and we are made of it. And if there is only one, there could be nothing, nothing, nothing outside of the one. So you are of this God substance because it can be no other way. And know with me then that the very substance of what we are is love, is harmony, is wisdom, is intelligence. Know with me that the power of that which tosses planets around in the galaxies with perfect ease and precision is the same power that surges through us, keeping all in perfect harmony. And know with me that the same intelligence that keeps macro and microcosms in perfect harmony is the same intelligence that is in and guides every cell of our bodies. It knows only wholeness. Know with me that the love and the wisdom that are intrinsic to the very nature of the one life that lives us all is the one and the same as that which opens our hearts and guides all that we do. Breathe. Let this be so. Uninvest in any old fear which would tell you otherwise. Take a chance. Put all of your eggs in the basket of this moment. Make yourself fully available to that which you cannot be separate from anyway. Be fully present. And from this deep, deep place of stillness, let this knowing birth our thoughts, guide the words we choose to express them with, and the actions inspired by our thoughts. Let it all be imbued with love. And when you're ready, you can wiggle a finger, wiggle a toe or two. When you're ready, open your eyes and bring all that good stuff back to right here, right now this moment. And so it is. Yes. Thank you, Reverend Nina. Um, I wanted to make a couple of comments about your message. Um, it's, it's really interesting to hear more of the background of Palm Sunday because um, 
for me, Palm Sunday has always just kind of been that tradition where we bring palm leaves and lay them out before the congregation as y'all walk out the doors. And it's just kind of been a fun little community activity. But it, it was really cool to hear the actual history and, and then the like unity implementation of that into our lives. Um, and something that especially stuck with me was that idea of the the point of no return, because I feel like, so I'm in, it feels like a big transition of going from high school to college right now. And I feel like I've just been inching towards that like point of no return. And, and through that, I think that, and something else that you said is that when we get to that point, we learn a lot about ourselves and how we deal with fear. And, and I feel like that is the best way I can describe this past year is just learning about myself through how I deal with fear and in those times of like extreme vulnerability with myself and high stress. I have I feel like I have luckily gotten through this year feeling closer to myself, but it hasn't been easy because I just feel like this, this idea of the point of no return has just been it something that does not feel like it's under my control, but but I have had to kind of shift my perspective into a positive outlook on that. Um, anyways, that was something that stood out to me. Um, <laughs> and um, we have now come to the time in our service where we have the opportunity to support our spiritual community financially so that we can continue to be a beacon of wholeness and healing in the world. You will find different options for giving on the screen behind me. You can also pop a check in the mail or drop your donation in the offering basket or scan the QR code on the offering envelope in the seat back in front of you. If you have your donation set up automatically and would still like to participate in the physical offering ritual, you'll find a laminated card in the seat back in front of you just for you. Just give it a blessing and slip it into the offering basket as it passes. We thank each and every one of you for your support of your spiritual community. And now we will do our prosperity blessing. So just take a deep breath in and out. If you would, please close your eyes and let us bless our offering by knowing deeply that we are immersed in limitless spirit substance. From this high consciousness, let us say together, I am divine abundance, brimming with possibilities. I activate the flow of prosperity in my life with my gifts of time, talent, and treasure. And so it is. If this is your first, second, or third time here, would you please and thank you raise your hand so that we can acknowledge you. Oh. Welcome. 
We're so glad that you're here with us today. In the seat pocket in front of you, you will find a black envelope like this one that looks like what's on the screen behind me. And this is for you. If you'd like to be kept informed about classes, concerts, and other community events, please fill out the welcome form you'll find inside and hand it to an usher on your way out. We typically only send one e-blast a month, sometimes two, and we absolutely will never share your email address with anyone. And as you leave today, please get your copy of The Daily Word from one of your ushers. The Daily Word is a booklet that offers inspiration and practical teachings through daily affirmative messages. This is our way of saying thanks for checking us out. And please join us for snacks and celebration in the community center across the parking lot in our community center. In closing today's service, please join us in saying our community blessing and prayer for protection, followed by a closing prayer and song. So please stand if you are able. Beloved friends, I see your divine light. I see your open heart. I see your life transforming. I celebrate your divine identity as you radiate your light in the world. And our prayer of protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. And all is well. Oh, so will you close your eyes with me and let us close our time together in prayer? Will you stand with me on this firm, firm ground of knowing our oneness with all of life? Whatever gifts that you have received from being in this community this morning, even if you are not yet aware of what they might be, I invite you to give it space. Take the time to give it space. Allow it, whatever that gift is, to take root in you. Allow yourself to feel, to experience your divine inheritance as beauty, as love, as wisdom, as intelligence, as peace, as harmony, as joy, as the light of the world. Just let that soak in, all the way in. And then I invite you to carry that light that you are out into the world and let yourself shine because you matter. You make a difference. So let's let it be one of love, shall we? And we let this be so. And so it is. Thank you so much, Reverend Nina. I always uh, take a second to thank everybody who helped make our service possible today. And today when I was walking in and just being blown away by all the beautiful blue bonnets, I, I realize we rarely say thank you to our maintenance and facilities team, but they do a wonderful job of making sure that everything around here looks beautiful. And right now it is really, really beautiful out there. So I wanna say thank you to them first and foremost because we don't do it enough. <clears throat> um, and can we give a special thank you also to our musical guest today, 34K was so awesome. And we're just so blessed to have such amazing talent come through our doors. Um, but we also have our youth and family uh, ministry across the street, not the street, but the alley, <laughs> and um, our hospitality team, our AV team in the back, our ushers, our prayer chaplains, um, our music team, which is always awesome. Zinnia, thank you so much. You did an awesome job today. Very good job today. Um, and thank you to your parents too, the Crowleys. They always make sure we have beautiful flowers up here and it's, it's such a treat. Really, every week we get different flowers, and it's wonderful. Um, but thank you to all of you who are here today. Um, it just, it's so wonderful to be in the presence of such wonderful, beautiful people, and, and you guys add so much to everybody around you and to us. And it's just 
we're just grateful you're here. So thank you.